here we are again at Learn Ubuntu Green Room for another presentation. This is on the newbie mouse skills. To those of you that are new, I mean real newbies, you're going to find this presentation good. I know so often we find that the uh, computer books assume you know something. This course begins assuming you know nothing. And that's the point, to give everybody a, uh, a fair starting point, so to speak. This is Learn Ubuntu Live. And I'm Tom Judge making this presentation to you. And our presentation will be on the mouse skills. This presentation is all about using the mouse and the keyboard. It is for newbies. And we want to give everybody a fair chance to learn computers. And this is the beginning point. So this is the beginning topic mouse and the keyboard. So first thing is, what kind of mouse do you have? Does your mouse eat cheese and is cute like that one in the upper left? Or maybe you have one of the other mice. Hopefully for your computer you have one of the other mice. We're gonna um, we're gonna describe what some of these other mice are and the features of them. This here is a standard two button mouse with a scroll wheel. That wheel in the middle there allows you to scroll the contents of the screen and we're going we're to show you how to do that. Uh, you may have a laptop like this over here that has an eraser head mouse or you may have a a trackball type of mouse. I've also seen these in some of the older laptops, a little trackball. Or maybe you have a touchpad. If you have a newer laptop you probably have a touchpad. You can also use an external touchpad such as the one shown here. Now, you got to take care of your mouse. The first thing we recommend is that you use a mouse pad. Now, that may not be the mouse pad that the mouse right below here wants, because there's no cheese in it, but it will take care of your computer mouse. Now, here we show you two mice. This is a newer laser mouse, and now it has a little laser light in the bottom. And this is a slightly older mouse that actually has a little ball that moves as you move the mouse around the pad. Now using a mouse pad will help to make your mouse movements less erratic. Especially if you're new and trying to learn mouse skills. Uh, you want to make sure the mouse is moving smoothly. It can be very frustrating if you're trying to get used to using a mouse and it's not moving the way you expect. Also we found that with these laser mice, if you use them on a black surface, they're probably not going to work very well because there's nothing to reflect the laser light. Now, all mice should have a left and right click mouse button. This is a bird's eye view of your mouse. There's a left click button and there's a right click button. Obviously, one's on the left and one's on the right. They surround your scroll wheel. If you have a touchpad, it most likely has a left button and a right button as well, but also on some touch pads, the pad itself will work as a left button. You can double click or single click on the pad. If you have a laptop, here on my laptop I have a left button, a right button. The pad also doubles as the left button. There's an option where you can enable or disable that feature. And on touch pads, you often have an area to the right here, which is the scroll area. If you move your fingers up and down that scroll area, it will do the same thing that a scroll wheel would do on a standard mouse. Now, let's get our mouse clicks right. Here we have a left mouse click. And if we ask you to click, the left click is implied, by the way. Somebody says when instructions say, click on this or click on that. Unless it specifically says right click, it's meant to be the left mouse button. Here's our right mouse button click. Notice that my finger is on the right button. And again, if we want you to click on the right mouse button, we will specifically say right click on this or right click on that. Now, this mouse, and the standard mouse, may have a scroll wheel, which you can use to scroll the contents of your window. And again, on the laptop, we have a scroll area. And I'm going to show you, just so you can see, we're going to get a blimp shop of this. 
here is our scroll wheel on this mouse. And as I scroll this wheel, you see the screen is actually moving up and down. It actually scrolls the contents of the screen. Okay. Now that comes in very handy. Once you start to get used to using that, you will always use it. It also works with drop-down lists. Now, this is a summary of mouse movements. I'm going to look at this summary, but I also am going to open up a, a little screen with a demo window to show you some of these movements firsthand. And let's, here's, our, here's our window. I'm going to log in quickly. Now, we have a lot of exercises on using the mouse, and it may seem like it's beginner stuff, but yes, that's the intention. This is a beginner's course. And, and one of the things we show you in that lesson is how to use the, a game known as Solitaire to learn how to use the mouse. And you can play this game as much as you want until you get good with the mouse. That's a great way to learn. Here's a left click. I'm going to just... I'm going to move my blimp in here and get a shot of the mouse also as I'm doing this. You hear the noise of the blimp flying. Let's get a, get a shot of that so everybody can see it. Cause this, is, this is one of my fun projects to make this blimp fly here. It's actually on fishing wire, but it's pretty cool. And the blimp has a camera which we can point down to get a shot of our mouse. Let's see if we're going to get a decent shot here. It's got to come a little more forward to get our mouse. We're flying the blimp in to get a picture of the mouse now. There it is. And you can see my fingers on the mouse. Okay. So now you can see as I'm moving the mouse on the screen here, as I click here now, I'm going to do a single click on this, which exposes the card. Notice I, did, I said single click. I didn't say left click, but that's what I meant. Now here's a drag and drop example. I'm going to go over to the ace. I'm going to click it, drag it up to there, and let go. That's how you drag and drop. Then here's the two of clubs. I can drag and drop that on top of the ace. See that? Here's a red seven. I can click that and drop that. No, well, it won't let me drop it on top of the red eight, but it will go on top of the black eight. This is solitaire. So if you play this game, you will get some really good mouse skills. Here's an eight on top of the red nine. And so on. Here's a red jack we can put on top of the black queen. Now, I'm not going to play the whole game here for you now. We can also use the mouse to move the window. Notice I'm grabbing the top part of the window. And I'm going to move it around by grabbing it in the menu, the title bar section, rather than the window. I can move it around. If I move the mouse over to the left corner, notice it turns into a little different looking mouse pointer. I can click and I'm going to drag and make that window bigger. Or I can make the window smaller. I could also use these minimize and maximize buttons if I do that. That makes the window fill the entire screen. If I click this button, it puts it back to its normal size. If I click this button, it's now minimized down to here. I'll bring it back to the screen. Okay? So, now as far as scrolling, let me open up a different screen to show you some of the scrolling. The first, so we saw, let me see here, hold on, I'm going to minimize this. We just saw dragging. We just saw dragging and dropping. Let me show you the mouse over now. If I just take the mouse and just hold it over something, see what it says? A little balloon opens and shows us what that is. Well, if I hang it over here, there's a help. Well, if I put it over this, and depending on how the program is written originally, this will show you that's a mouse over function. Now, resize. We just saw that. We'll show you one more time the resizing. If I click here, I'd rather drag the mouse over. As I hold the mouse over, and notice the icon changes. And now I can resize that window. Okay? Getting mouse skills is very important. And it may seem simple to those of us who have been doing this before. But let me tell you, especially for newbies, you can really feel like a, 
a moron trying to use a mouse until you get used to it. it. It takes a little bit of finesse and a little bit of getting used to the mouse ballistics. And they can be set also in your system. I'll show you that in a second. Now, scrolling. Scrolling is another useful part of the mouse. Let's bring our demo window back. We'll close our solitaire. We're going to open the browser here. And let's go to our own page. Now, notice if I click in this here window, okay, first of all, I can use this scroll bar. See that? And I can drag the window up and down. I can also just be clicking in the window, use the mouse wheel. And here I'm using the wheel on the mouse to move the mouse up and down. Move the window up and down. Okay. So that's scrolling. So now we've seen dragging, drag and drop, mouse over, resize, and scrolling. Okay. These are the basic mouse keys, the basic mouse functions that we need to become familiar with. Spend as much time as you need to get familiar with the mouse before you go any further. Make sure you're comfortable, okay, because it can frustrate you if you're not. Let's talk about some basic keyboard skills. Again, this is a newbie class. This is a beginner lesson. This course we want it to be for people who never use the computer so they'd have a chance that somebody explain the basics to them. Okay. Here we see two types of keyboards. Here we see a laptop keyboard and a standard keyboard. Now you may notice since the laptop keyboard is on the laptop, it's condensed in some ways. Here's the middle area of a standard keyboard. We have our number keys up top. We have our alphabetic keys in the middle here. Okay. We also have some special keys. We have a caps lock key, a shift key, a tab key, a backspace key, the enter key, which could also be called return in some cases, and a second shift key. Below these, I'm not showing it, is usually a space bar. On the right, usually located to the right of your main keyboard, we have the arrow keys, which you can use to move the cursor up, down, left, or right. We may have a special numeric keyboard. If you have a standard keyboard, you may have this. If you have a laptop, you may not have this, or it may be mixed in with the other keys somewhere. Important on this keyboard, though, this caps lock LED. So many times people try to log into some place and they have the caps lock on. With your caps lock on, your password is not the right password. Okay. There's also a number lock and a scroll lock indicator on there. Those are a little more advanced topics. I won't cover them right now. We have function keys. Okay, The function keys in Linux can be used to switch your screen to a console screen. F1 to F7 or console, if you hold Control Alt F1, Control Alt F2, etc., will switch you between console screens. F7 is the GUI screen, the other screens are just big terminal screens. If you hit Alt, Control Alt F1, you may go, oh my god, I'm in a terminal, what do I do now? Okay, Control Alt F7 will bring you back to the GNOME desktop, the GUI screen. Caps Lock, friend or foe, we mentioned that. If you, hold, if you hit the caps lock, everything you type will be in capital. If you hit it again, it will toggle off and everything will be in lowercase unless you hit the shift key. If you happen to be in caps lock and you hit the shift key, then it will shift you from capital to lowercase. Under normal circumstances, it shifts you from lowercase to uppercase. Here's some key combinations. Control alt delete often called the Vulcan handshake. Okay, That is many times used to reboot a machine. The enter key, very important when we get to using the terminal. When we tell you to enter a command, it's implied that after you type the command, you press the enter key. So don't forget that. 
Some other noteworthy keys include the backspace key, the insert, and delete key. Let me show you a little something about those. I'm going to minimize this for a second. Let's open our, we have a new file here we create. We'll open that up with our gedit. And let's type a line of text. Here is a line of text. Now I'm using the arrow keys. Let's go to our blimp shot again so we can see this here. I'm using the arrow keys to go back and to go forward or up. I can't really go up and down because I have multiple lines. Now, important, if I'm parked here online, if I hit the backspace key, I delete that text. Now, if I want to put in new text, I'm normally in insert mode, so I can put that line back in. But now if I go to override, if I hit the insert key one time here, now notice the cursor change. I am now no longer in insert mode. I am in overwrite mode. And this will replace the text. If I go back a little bit here and I hit my insert key again, I am now back in insert mode and I am inserting text rather than overwriting text. The home key and the end key also pose a very special function. If I'm on the end of this line, right there and right here at home, it brings me to the beginning of the line. If I hit end, it brings me to the end of the line. If this were a multi-line document, page up and page down would bring me up and down multiple lines in the page. The tab key is a very helpful key. If I hit Alt Tab, I can let me cycle through the programs that I have on my desktop. Okay, if I happen to have a form open, such as a web page, oh, I'm clicking in this. If I hit the tab key, it moves me down to elements of the web page. See that? And I am here. If I want to go back an element, if I hit the shift tab key, it will take me back up an element. So that's what that does. I'll show you that again on the keyboard here. I'm just bringing the flip a little closer to get a little better picture of the keyboard. Here I'm hitting the tab key and I went forward. Here I'm hitting the alt tab key, I'm sorry, the uh, shift tab key. And I go back to tab forward, shift tab backwards. Little keyboard shortcuts can save a lot of time. There's more. We'll learn more as we go along with this courses. Here's some more cool keys. The, these are the last three keys we'll mention in the keyboard. The, the uh, print screen, which is used to capture, do screen captures. The scroll lock, which can lock you from scrolling too far in a terminal window. And the pause break, which is used sometimes for uh, troubleshooting of computers having problems booting. You know, as a computer boots, you may see a lot of stuff scroll past the screen. It goes by so fast you can't see what it is. If you hit that pause key, it will pause the computer during boot to troubleshoot. That's just some highlights on the mouse and the keyboard. We, we hope that you, uh, you enjoyed this. We hope that you're able to get something out of it uh, because being a beginner can be tough. Not knowing, you know, some of the basics can really uh, frustrate you. And we don't want you to be frustrated. We want you to have a good foundation to learn um, what you need to know so you can continue learning more about computers. So, we hope you enjoyed this presentation.